Hello everyone. Today we are going to continue with the tissue chapter. Hope you are enjoying this chapter because this is having a lot of concepts and at the same time a very important chapter. And you need to revise this again and again because often I heard people saying, my students saying that they forget, they tend to forget the example. See, the only way to study this chapter is repeat, repeat, repeat and repeat. So the more you repeat it some couple of days, say four to five days continuously, you will be able to retain all these examples very well. And trust me, it is it is very important for your neat and board. Now, coming to the continuation of the epithelial tissue, your epithelial tissue basic characteristic we have done in our last video. So we are going to talk about each of them. So starting with the basement membrane. Basement membrane is actually two layers. So if you look into the basement membrane, we can see it is having the beginning that is basal lamina followed by the next layer which is called as fibrous lamina. Now, as the name suggests, okay, fibrous lamina have got more of fibers, whereas the basal lamina is mainly made up of, you know, a kind of polysaccharide called as mucopolysaccharide. So, this is the basal lamina. And next layer, we can see that this is the fibrous lamina. So, let's look into basal lamina. It is basically made up of mucopolysaccharides as well as glycoprotein. Okay, so when the carbohydrate groups are attached to proteins, they are referred to as glycoproteins. Now, fibrous lamina. Fibrous, the word itself say they consist of fiber. Now, if you look into this fibrous lamina, they have a network of fiber which are referred to as reticular fiber and mostly they have collagen protein, okay, present in them. Okay, so again, repetition of this uh, basement membrane, if I do, it is made up of two layers, that is basal lamina and fibrous lamina. Now, what is their main function? What is the main function of this basal lamina? Uh, or you can say, what is the main function of this basement membrane? Basement membrane mainly help in exchange of material. What are they helping in? They are helping in exchange of material. They help in exchange of selective material. Apart from that, they also help in elastic support or we can say that they provide elastic support. They are also for providing elastic support. So, if you look into basement membrane, they're extremely important for epithelial tissue because we now know that epithelial tissue originate from this basement membrane. Now, what is the next characteristic we have seen apart from basement membrane? Modification of the epithelial tissue that is protoplasmic extension. And in my last video, I already said that we are going to look into detail of it. So, protoplasmic extension or outgrowth, if we look into, they are of three types. If they are hair-like, they are called as cilia. If they are having tapering ends and outgrowths like this, they're called as stereocilia. And if they are finger-like projection like this, then they are called as microvilli. Now, we can see in the picture, students, that this particular cilia is arising from a granule, which is called as basal granule. Whereas, we can see that in case of stereocilia and microvilli, there is no such granule which is found. Now, one very important point which you always have to remember is only the cilia is motile. So, cilia... Uh, is motile. They can move. They show the capacity of movement. Okay, so wherever movement is required, their presence will be found in the body parts. Okay, stereocilia and microvilli are non motile. They do not move. So, stereocilia and microvilli are non motile. So, who can only move? It is only the cilia which can actually show motility. 
I hope this is clear. So if you look into the picture, you can see that cilia is a hair-like process. Stereocilia is having this kind of tapering ends, okay, elongated, and they are having tapering ends, whereas microvilli is finger-like projection. Now, looking into the difference between these three, we can the consider the first point as their basal granule. Basal granule is only found in case of cilia, but absent in case of stereocilia and microvilli. If you look into their structure, the cilia is hair-like projection. Your uh, stereocilia is elongated, uh, not hair-like, but they are elongated with tapering ends, whereas the microvilli are finger-like process. Similar way, if you look into the uh, other cell coating characteristic of this particular uh, feature, which is called as glycocalyx. Now, what is this glycocalyx, students? When you have studied cell membrane, you have seen that there are lipids and proteins which are making the cell membrane, cell chapters, okay? You have studied in your 9th and 10th also. Now, this lipids and proteins are often attached to a carbohydrate group. Okay, and those carbohydrate moieties which are attached to the lipid and protein form cell coat which is called as glycocalyx. And this glycocalyx may be found in case of stereocilia, but it is absent in case of stereocilia or in case of your uh, microvilli. So they can be only found, may be found that also in case of stereocilia and I hope you understand this glycocalyx actually forms a kind of cell coat over the cell membrane because of the presence of the chains of sugar molecule over the lipids and the and the proteins and we know that this particular glycocalyx actually helps in antigen recognition or they're also helpful in cell to cell recognition. Now about this glycocalyx you have studied in your cell membrane that is in your cell biology chapter of botany and in your 9th and 10th also little you have studied about them. Now looking about or looking into the most important part of this three thing that is location where are they found? As we already spoke about the cilia, they are helping in movement. So cilia is present in the respiratory tract and in the ovida. Whereas the stereocilia, their function is not very clearly defined and they are found in the epididymis and vast difference of the male reproductive system. Now, if you look into the microvilli, microvilli are found in the intestine and what is their function, students? We all know they help in increasing the surface area of absorption. I hope this is absolutely clear. So we have just spoken about the modification of the epithelial tissue, that is the protoplasmic extensions, okay, which is basically nothing but modification. Now, let's Let's look into another very important part or characteristic of this epithelial tissue, which maybe you are learning for the first time in your 11, that is cell junction. Now, cell junctions are the junctions which are helping in connection between two cells or they're helping in attachment between two cells. So they are basically the connection between two adhering cells. Okay, there are two kinds of cell junction. One is unspecial for unspecialized contact. Okay, they're not very specialized, but they're simply helping in contact by the help of some molecule called as cell adhesion molecule which in short is called as CAM. Now, students, you will get this term CAM here and there. So please remember this CAM stands for cell adhesion molecule. As for example, cadherin, a glycoprotein, which is found in the junctions between the epithelial cell. So one of the example is cadherin and integrins. Okay, they are again a type of glycoprotein that binds the cell with the extracellular matrix towards its outer surface. We know that there is no intracellular matrix, so there is some outer matrix, so to that it is connecting the cell. So the two examples of CAM are integrins and cadherins. Now the main specialized uh, junctions which are found in case of your epithelial tissue are the tight junctions, 
also called as zonula occludens or gap junction which is called as maculae communicans adhering junctions and intercellular bridges and interdigitations okay now if you look into this adhering junction they are again of different type like zonula adherens okay which are the adhesive bells it is also called as terminal burrs desmosomes called as maculae adherens and hemi desmosome now whenever we get this term hemi hemi refers to half so they are just like half desmosome now let's quickly look into the picture of them so that we can understand all these terms we have just spoken about that is what is this tight junction what is this gap junction what is this adhering junction what are this intercellular bridges and interdigitation now this is one cell and this is another cell and in between we can see the cell junction so this is one cell this is another cell on the surface we can see the microvilli we can see the microvilli which are extension which are protoplasmic extension of the epithelial cells okay so we can see here that on the top we can see a junction present which is called as tight junction now tight junction is holding the two cells very tightly so that there is absolutely no movement they do not allow any movement they are only helping in adhering the two cells together the next junction we look into is gap junction and if you look into this you can see that there is a gap and there are some proteins which are guarding here the gap junction creating a channel and this channel allows movement of some selective material so they are mainly for movement okay they are helping in movement now the next junction we talk about is adhering junction and one of the most important adhering junction is desmosome so when you look into this desmosome you can see that inside the desmosome okay in this desmosome there are this kind of deposition which are called as you know the plaques okay plaques are nothing but protein kind of plates so they are the protein plates which are like a hard deposition called as plaques okay what are they called as plaques inside this plaques we can see some proteins okay this dotted things are nothing but proteins called as intercellular proteins and on the side of this we can see some fiber some small small filament like fiber called as tonofibril tonofibrils are intermediate filaments tonofibrils are intermediate filaments is that clear okay so this is a type of adhering junction now if you go down so this is the basement membrane you can see and on top of that in between the two cells we can see that the cells are going inside and out inside and out making a kind of you know kind of invagination in both the cell this kind of uh, structure which a cell junction form is called as interdigitation okay now from here a lot of questions are expected students and as a result cell junction forms a very important part of epithelial tissue so when you look into this epithelial tissue as i said the most important cell junctions are tight junction gap junction adhering junction intercellular bridge and interdigitation okay now you have to remember also their alternate names because sometime they may give in your mcqs so tight junction is also called as zonula occludens gap junction is also called as maculae communicans and adhering junctions are of different kind if it is just an adhesive belt okay then they are called as uh, the zonula adherens if they are having all those plaques proteins and the fibrils then they are called as desmosome if it is only half of it then it is called as hemi desmosomes okay now in 2007 they asked a question regarding this cell junction that in which of the following cell uh, you know the cell junctions are more frequent and they gave the options as hyaline cartilage ciliated epithelium thrombocytes and tendon now cartilage Uh, thrombocytes and tendon they are all 
connective tissue which do not have any cell junction but ciliated epithelium says that they are a epithelial tissue and obviously epithelial tissue has got this characteristic feature of cell junction so your answer is ep ciliated epithelium okay I hope you have understood little about this cell junction. So quickly looking into what is a tight junction. Tight junction is found in the tip, in the top. So it is found in the apical part of adjacent epithelial cells. Tightly packing the cells or the cell junction. And if you look into their function, what is their function? They check the flow of material between cells. We have already discussed that do not allow any kind of movement between each of the cell. Looking into gap junction, they are fine channels, hydrophilic channels. They are water loving. So they are hydrophilic channels made up of some proteins, okay, on either side, okay, making a uh, transport possible. So the protein cylinders which are present on either side are called as connexons. Okay, X-O-N-S, C-O-N-N-E, X-O-N-S. And what is their function? They are support, of course, physical support, and they're meant for chemical exchange between the adjacent cells. Looking into adhering junction, they are cementing function to keep the neighboring cells together or intact. Now looking into their uh, function individually, if you talk about a desmosome, they're also called as maculae adherens. They are plate-like areas with intercellular proteins and tonofibrils or microfibrils. Okay, so they are the plate-like areas which provide strong mechanical attachment okay between the adjacent cells with the help of some molecules and filaments we have seen that inside the plates there are these proteins which are called as intercellular protein and where are they found they are mostly found where strong cohesion is required coming to hemidesmosomes as we already spoke about them they are half desmosome which forms anchoring between the base of the epithelial tissue they're not on the top they're at the base and the underlying basement membrane so they are found in the base of the epithelial tissue and the basement membrane Looking into the zonula adherence, okay, which we have seen that one of the most important type of adhering junction is a dense undercoat present on the cytoplasm of the plasma membrane, but consists of microfilament and intermediate filament. Okay, adherin is made with the help of CAM molecules, that is, cadherin molecule. Now let's look into the intercellular bridge. So intercellular bridge are the projection from adjacent cell into common intercellular space that come in contact for quick transfer of stimulus. So what is the main function of this intercellular bridge? They are mainly for transfer of stimuli. They help in quick transfer of stimuli. Looking into interdigitation, they enhance. What is the function of this uh, interdigitation? They enhance adherence by going like this and this and this. We have seen the picture, right? So they enhance adherence and provide large area for exchange. So they not only enhance the attachment between the two cells, but they also help in, you know, mutual exchange. Okay. They provide areas, a large surface area for exchange between the cell. And what is the function of this intercellular bridge? They are mainly for transfer of stimuli. So with this, we have actually covered up the entire cellular junction, which forms a very important characteristic feature of the epithelial tissue. So what are the four types of main cell junction? They are gap junction, they are tight junction, they are adhering junction, and interdigitation. Also, we see some intercellular bridges, which we have seen here, and they are mainly for transfer of stimuli. Now, with this, students, we are going to wind up the video for the day, and we are going to continue it in our next video. Thank you. Hope you are